Welcome to Abstract Illusions Radio with host Jennifer Hillman. The show explores and reveals the human potential through creativity. So enjoy the show to create a life you love. Hello everyone, this is Jennifer Hillman and welcome to Abstract Illusions Radio. Today I am happy to return visit with a good friend of mine who actually wrote the opening song to my show, Martin Spence. He has been a good friend of mine for, God, it must be like 10 years now, and yeah. his his career has taken off. He originally was on the show talking about being an extreme sport and he's climbed mountains. He was just mentioning that he ran in Death Valley when it was 130 degrees out. He has now so many changes, so I really wanted to get back in touch with Martin and see how things have changed since the last time you were on. So Martin, thank you again for being on the show again. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. Now, you really are focusing a lot on your music, more so than the last time you were on. So, tell us about figuring out how you even wanted to do music as one of your many ways of expression. Oh, wow. Well, that just, you know, um, it happened early on in my life, actually, but... Um, I never um, thought that it would be such a that it would become such a, a part of my life. Uh, but as the years uh, progressed and got older, uh, music became just something that uh, that I had to do. It was just something that that happened to me, you know. And um, uh, I've been blessed that I've been able to create. Uh, many different forms uh, in, in, in different genres, you know, uh, in post-rock, uh, alternative, indie, folk, uh, pop, and many instrumentals, as, as you know. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's been a, a real adventure. So where do you find your inspiration? Now, I know you have a diverse listening um, palette for your music is, yeah. you know, is there something within your life that is a big inspiration? I know you and your daughter have done many things together, um, and she is amazing. There's talk about somebody in, that's going to be huge down the line. Um, <laughs> she is quite amazing. Um, so what, where do you get your inspirations? Uh, you know, it's um, it's a combination of many things. I think just uh, some things are, are many experiences in my life, uh, things uh, that I've endured, uh, good things as well as as bad things, and um, it's just uh, uh, all those things combined. You know, just in that moment. Um, it's all spontaneous, of course. I, I never sit down and think, uh, I need to write uh, this type of song today. Uh, it's just something that happens, you know. And so um, it, um, it just comes in a very, uh, very natural, quiet state, really. And uh, uh, it, uh, it's good. Uh, I, and, of course, the outdoors. Um, I enjoy the outdoors a lot and being in nature. And uh, that silence sometimes uh, just kind of uh, just puts me in that right place. So how does extreme sports inspire you in music, or does it? Or is it just the experience of being outdoors in that challenge? And do you think of writing music as one of those challenges? No, no. Um, I think for me, um, music is, is like breathing. It's something that has to happen. Um, it, uh, it might even 
uh, come easy to me, I think. Uh, but uh, that being said, sometimes it's it's like a double-edged sword, you know, uh, that uh, it, it might be easy to me, but I have to deal with all those emotions and all those feelings that uh, I conjure up in those moments, and that's very difficult. And um, um, But the extreme sports, that kind of just, um, like I told someone earlier uh, this week, uh, it's about... It kind of humbles you, you know. You you are open. You are defenseless when you are out um, in an environment uh, that's hostile, you know, and that is not favorable to your body. And uh, you're you're you have to deal with yourself, and you have to peel back layers of of yourself. And um, I think. Um, I get a sense of humility when it comes to those things. And I think it makes me a little more sensible and sensitive, I should say, to uh, the kind of music that I write. Now, a lot of your your music really deal with love relationships. Yeah. Um, you actually met someone online, went over, visited, fell in Well, you were in love before, obviously. Mm-hmm. And ended up marrying this woman and moved to Spain. That right. That's kind of gutsy. Yeah. <laughs> I think <laughs> it probably is kind of gutsy. And I'm sure many people have done it. I've heard stories of, of, of men and women that have, uh, have uh, done that as well. And, and yeah, I think... Uh, you need to have that adventurous spirit also, and and uh, a lot of trust, you know, kind yeah. of trust in, in the universe and and uh, in the things that you know, um, because it could be very risky, you know. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, that qualifies me as an adventurist. Uh, there's no doubt there. Um, <laughs> so how does Alana? support you or does she inspire you what part of your music does she take a part of oh elena is um is uh wow i I can't uh it's hard to describe she um she's there you know and she she listens she hears uh she never um criticizes a song um, she will say at times, mm, I like that, or this song is stuck in my head that you were singing the other day. But she'll tell me, you know, um, three, four, five days later, um, oh, this song is stuck in my head. And once in a while, I hear her singing, and she knows the lyrics, but uh, she doesn't make it obvious <laughs> that she's really into it. You know, she's uh, she likes to keep me humble, I think. <laughs> Well, that's her job to keep you on your toes, too. I mean, <laughs> that is true. She does, <laughs> and she's a big support. She's a big support. You know, um, uh, this last concert that I did in Valencia, um, I had a violinist, and well, actually, I had a pianist, a guitarist, and a violinist, and one by one, they all fell away. And the last one was my violinist, and I think you have. Uh, I sent you a couple songs. Um, that have her playing, and um, but ro- uh, a couple of weeks before the concert, uh, she called me and said, "Hey, you know, I'm, I have a, an offer to do uh, something big in uh, another town, and she had to move, and so that was the end of, of of the violin. And I was just, I was so excited, you know, I was just looking forward having that violin accompany me and. And it was, I was just ah, excited. And when that happened, I, I told Elena, I said, you know, I think I'm just going to cancel that the concert and, and just not do it. I've just not, uh, I've lost, I'm not in the mood, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and she let me stay like that for a day or two. Then finally she spoke out and said, no, she said, you, uh, you were going to do the concert, um, irrespective of whether you have a violinist or not. So 
I did the concert. <laughs> that's that's awesome. And <laughs> so, what is the name of the song we are about to listen to? I believe the first one is uh, "Will You Come Into My Life One More Time." One, yeah. yeah. Will you come into my life one more time? All right. So here we are listening. Will you come into my life? By Martin Spence. Your music always gives me chills. <laughs> it, it, I just, I cannot tell you how much I love your music. And it was funny, the, the other day when we set this up, you said, you missed my voice. And it's like, you know, I'm lucky because I just have to turn on the music 
and you're <laughs> always there. And it really didn't strike me how important it is to connect with such dear friends in some way. So um, it's always good to just reach out and say, hey, you know, I'm still here. Yes. Um, and because we've been through a lot um, through the years. And it's just we met through music um, yes. on, on Django.com. And we've kept in touch through right. the years. And so we always will have that connection with music. I have a great appreciation and love for your music. So, but when I first met you, I don't think you were really doing your music quite yet, were you? No, not 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 really. Um, I, I was doing music, you know, writing a lot. I was been writing, but nothing like I am now, you know. Um, and uh, it was interesting, but uh, I think that was all preparation. Yes. So were you are you were you nervous at first to share your music or you just had that attitude like you let's go for it and just see where it goes? Yeah, pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. And uh, I think we last time we spoke about this, um, I mentioned to you that uh, I was I was satisfied just being able to 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 touch one person with the music in some way, you know, be some kind of inspiration or or to let them know that maybe what they're going through, uh, what they're feeling, that other people feel it also, you know, and uh, they're not alone in, in having those thoughts and feeling feeling lonely or feeling sad or, or fear, feeling rejected or abandoned and those type of things, you know, and uh, um, having to deal with those type of issues, you know. And, uh, um, touching one person is, is good enough for me. It's you also are a counselor as well. Have you ever been in contact with some of your clients, and they've really inspired you in your music? Um, I think that they remind me sometimes, especially the younger younger ones, of uh, parts of my life. Yeah. And um, feeling a little helpless, maybe, and and uh, um, maybe feeling a little alone. Um, so, yeah, I, I uh, I've connected with them, and uh, I, you know, was able to to feel what they were feeling. So uh, that's helped me a lot, I think. So, th through your music, what do you hope the audience? gets from it or what is the overall message of your music or is it here's just me sharing a little bit of me like it or not here it is <laughs> um you know that's an you asked the same question that someone else just did too and um and i'm going to answer it the same way because i think that anyone that comes to see me i the one thing that they can leave with is knowing that they that they saw someone that that shared with them some stories through music that were, that were sincere and very honest and uh, they were very real, you know, about real about real feelings, you know, and and uh, no sugar coating nothing like that I want it to be as as simple as possible but um, but very clear as well and I want them to walk away knowing that they uh, they spent an hour maybe um, uh, getting to know someone intimately because for me these these songs uh, are very intimate to me and very personal so do you think it, these days that there is, and I'm going to put a movement through finding people's own authentic voice to show more of their vulnerabilities hmm. through writing, music, art? Do you feel there's a more 
genuine heart coming out and what people are expressing? Or do you think there's a lot of people still, it's all about greed? It's what the, it, no, they can I, get out of it. Yeah, you know, I, I think that now um, uh, there, there's uh, better ways, I think, for people that are, are being true to themselves and to what the, the type of music that they're playing. Uh, there's more venues, I think, especially through the Internet, that they can put their music out there. And uh, um, there's many artists that uh, I know that uh, are, are great. They're wonderful. I love their music. And um, it, I, it's very heartfelt. And, and I can totally just relate to them, you know. Um, and those are not the artists that are you're going to hear on the radio. They're not top 40. They're not selling out... Uh, stadiums or anything like that they're not opening for big groups like you two <laughs> so you think they're they're staying small out of wanting to say small or they just haven't reached the audience in such a way that they have been option op ah, optioned those big gigs I, I think they've uh, chosen personally to stay out of the big venues, uh, but also I think that uh, many people still um, don't like feeling vulnerable and don't like when music makes them feel vulnerable as uh, either. You know, we we all have masks that we wear all the time. We're like chameleons, and uh, sometimes when you sit down and listen to someone's uh, songs, they totally pull at your heartstrings and your mask almost begins to come off. And, and some people don't like that. They, they get, um, they become very uh, defiant, basically, you know, and uh, they, they don't want to, they, they don't want to feel that vulnerability. Now, are you talking about the artist, the audience or both? the audience that's a very good point it's like even though because the musician or the poet or the author is really giving them permission to be more vulnerable it is a very uncomfortable feeling to actually do it correct so it and and i do think that there are a lot of people finding those groups of people that they do allow themselves to be vulnerable, but usually they're closed groups, not yeah. really big. Yes, very small groups, exactly. And and you know, music allows that to do you know to do that to be vulnerable, um, and to uh, to peel away that skin, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, How's that? Uh, but some people don't like it, and uh, we fight against it. Um, and we want to hear, you know, feel me good songs. And not that there's anything wrong with feel me good songs. It's it's okay. It's all right. Um, but um, I I don't think my music is going to give you. It's not a pep rally. <laughs> it it's really. You do feel your emotions in your song, even especially I think even more so with just your instrumental. It just lets the listener go to their own space within their own, or sharing that space of vulnerability. Mm. I I just words are great, and you express some amazing lyrics, and you're also a poet. I mean, you've done a lot of wonderful work. And by the way, we didn't even mention this. Why don't you let people know about your website or how they can listen to all your music? Let's let's get that out before we forget. <laughs> um, well, uh, right now, you know, there's there's two CDs out. There's uh, from her room and currents. And that's currently available through cdbaby.com. And I am currently working 
trying to get the songs together for the third one, um, which will be titled uh, Between the Wind and Sound. Um, and I do have one, an instrumental that I would like to also put together. So that's in the works also. And they can listen, of course, to my music on, uh, on Facebook if they want to, just Martin Spence Music, or on YouTube. Just search for Martin Spence. And, and it does come up that I often just put on your playlist and just go about my day. <laughs> um, it's it really is a tremendous music. So, with do you feel like you're healing through your vulnerability? Yeah, I think so. You know, um, because I think that when we we are suffering, we are alone. And uh, I I think that when I was a child, I I. I was sad, you know, about many things, and um, I felt alone. Uh, and so, what happens is that you go inside yourself, and you become a dreamer, and and you become uh, uh, just you want to be something else, someone else, and and uh, everything is closed in. And so, the music allowed me, allows me now, just to. Open up those doors. Open up those places where I hid feelings and thoughts. And now I can freely let them out, you know. Um, so, yeah, I think um, it's, uh, it's a very interesting thing. So what kind of um, advice or suggestion would you make for anyone who wants to get their music out there or wants to start producing their own sound, what kind of suggestions or inspirations would you give to them? Wow. Um, just to be true to their sound, be true to themselves. Um, you know, if you want to make a million dollars, that's all fine. Um, but, um, it's a hard business, you know. Uh, but I think that if, if you do it for the love of music and for the love of your art, you're not going to worry about uh, uh, landing a contract or a label. Uh, you're going to do it and you're going to find the means to put it out there, whether you record it yourself uh, and release it on your own or whatever, just sharing, free sharing. Um, just be true to yourself and, uh, and enjoy what you're doing. And it, that is the beauty of the internet. It is so easy to get yourself out there. I mean, I, it, there's two huge stars now. Well, two people in the music that are big that actually it was my space and they yep. were discovered on there and now they've gone all over the place um, I think one has handled it a lot better than the other but that's okay that's their experience um, that is their experience yeah and you know the um, um, the social media can also be a, a little cruel so uh, it doesn't matter you know you're not doing it to get a bunch of likes you're not doing it to get a bunch of fans, you do it because it's who you are. And when you do it for that reason, all the rest doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't really play into who you are and what you do. And the other thing that is about the music business being hard to get into, the other thing is so many artists now are realizing that getting that big contract isn't great. They actually lose money and owe people money by getting those big contracts. So a lot of people, because it's so easy these days to be an independent, are choosing to stay independent and they still make it big. It's hard work, but if you have that dedication, it is possible. It is. It is. And if you see it as art, 
um, you you will be dedicated to your art. And and you know it's it being true to yourself is such a huge part of this life experience is really finding that authentic self and saying this is who I am like it or not yeah. I'm here um, and that I think is um, what a lot of people are kind of struggling with in a lot of ways these days is feeling okay with everything they've been through and understanding we're all playing roles and it isn't really them. Correct. That's right. And and being okay with those silent moments where they're with themselves and kind of laughing at all the happenings around them and not taking life too seriously because it can drive you batty if you get overwhelmed by what society and the illusion is throwing at you. Yeah, I mean, just, just look at all the people that go to California, to Hollywood, to become movie stars, um, and how many just end up on the street because they have completely given up because they never became movie stars. And that was the only thing they wanted to do in their life. And so now they're just, they're on the street, basically. You know? Yeah. Uh, not doing anything at all. So it's, um, it's, you know, everyone gets 15 minutes of fame. Um, what, what comes after that, you know, is that like, what's there? Right. What's left? Um, I don't want 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> you, I want to my art. <laughs> you, you just want love, joy, and expression and that's just right. to be and, and that's exactly and I want to inspire what, people you know I want to inspire them to 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 move to be shaken from within and and don't be afraid you know not to be afraid just uh, just uh, uh, become and be real be sincere be honest uh, uh, be kind, you know, be gentle and, and uh, you know, forget all the, all the other masks that everyone wants us to wear. And, and sometimes, even though that's hard, sometimes that is the biggest struggle, is yeah. not feeling obligated to a mask that has been handed to you and that you accepted. You is can that, change that at any time. <laughs> That's yeah. really up to you. That's right. So, what is the next song that you would like me to play? Um, let's see. I believe the next one is Everyone Moves On. Perfect. <laughs> I think I set that one up with 